Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make a paper sculpture and wire it to light up with copper tape and LEDs. The first thing I'm going to do is cut the label off a 2 liter bottle, try to peel off as much as I can. I'm going to unscrew it so that it collapses more easily and pinch to cut and expand the circle, expand the cut. I'm going to cut two semicircles, sort of one at the top and one at the bottom. That will provide a space where I can insert the light strip later on at the end. I don't want to get paper mache paste on the table, so I put down a placemat and I'm going to cover the bottle in paper mache paste. Then I'm just going to do a quick layer of paper mache over the top of the whole thing. So I'm going to wrap it in tissue paper so that it's a little bit more translucent. I can use different colors. Um, a lot of times it's a good idea to stick with an analogous color scheme um, or stick with very limited color palette because of the fact that a lot of tissue papers, the dyes will bleed and you want colors that will mix well together. That's why I'm sticking with just cool colors on the exterior of this bottle. I'm using different shades of purples, maybe a little bit of blue, a little bit of green to get some variety. But generally speaking, I stick with colors that are going to blend well together. Now at the end, I might decide to make it sort of spiky by twisting the tissue paper as it's covered in glue so that I'll have spikes that will stick up on the end. So you want to let it dry. And in this case what I'm going to do is decorate it so it's sort of halfway between uh, an African mask and an insane clown. So I'm just cutting out shapes of different colors of construction paper to make different features. Um, I fold a couple of times so that I get a symmetrical design and so that I am cutting two shapes at the same time because I'm going to want to have symmetrical eyes and it just makes it a lot easier to get a symmetrical design that way. Um, one common mistake a lot of students make is they just put one sheet of paper down. It's a good idea to lots of times have layers so you have multiple colors. It makes for a more interesting design. And again, I'm just going to glue it on and try to keep it symmetrical as I do it, sort of in the style of African masks. Next, I'm going to add a nose because I want to show one pop-up element. So to do this, I'm, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to cut a triangle shape. And then I'm going to fold tabs on two sides, put glue on those tabs, and stick it on. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is make a mouth. So I'm going to do this as a simple semicircle type of design. I guess sticking with my creepy clown type theme. And I always want to remind people it doesn't have to be a straight edge. You can cut a wavy edge, zigzag edge, lots of different things. And I'm going to cut an opening in there so that when I light this up, more light can easily shine through because the light will shine through the tissue paper a lot better than it shines through the construction paper elements that I'm adding. Another technique that some students like is adding a little bit of fringe with the paper. So I just cut a shape and make a whole bunch of cuts on that, going back and forth. Then I, I like to sort of ruffle it up, rough it up, and I'm going to glue that on, almost like hair or a crown on top of its head. And I'm going to add another layer to that. Again, layering, adding more colors, gives it a little bit more depth, a little bit more visual interest. And I am going to put a line of glue and stick that one on. Of course, you can add more than just tissue paper. Of course, you can add more than just paper. Um, I can add yarn by just putting a line of glue where I want the yarn to be. And on a rounded form, of course, you're going to end up with a uh, little bit of dripping. I can wipe that up with a, um, my finger or a paper towel or a tissue. It will dry clear, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, I put on one half, and then, then I went to the, the second half. Just um, to divide it up, make it easier so I don't get scraps accidentally glued to it as I roll things around. Um, and then... I can also, if I add one, 
If I add yarn as an element in one spot, it can be a good idea to add it as another element in another area, uh, just to sort of balance it out. I like to repeat elements in different areas so it, it feels more unified with the rest of the composition. And of course it can also be a good idea to use different colors of yarn. To now it's time to make a strip of lights. I'm going to do this as simple parallel circuits, so I'm just going to draw two straight line segments. Uh, I'm going to label one with a plus and one with a minus. It doesn't really actually matter which one is the plus and which one is the minus at this stage. I'm going to cut that out, and now I'm going to put two lines of copper tape down where I had drawn those um, Sharpie lines. Want to get a nice smooth straight line if I can. And those lines should be about an inch or so apart, um, maybe an inch and a half. You don't want them too far apart because you need the LED lights to be able to span the distance between them. Now when I take the LED lights out of the box, I will notice that there are two metal prongs. One is longer than the other. The longer end is going to go to the plus line and the shorter end is going to go to the to the minus line, the negative line. Um, so I'm going to lay that in place. I'm going to use copper tape to tape it in place. Um, and then after I put down my first light, I always like to test it out and make sure that I'm doing this correctly. So I'm going to get a battery and I'm going to fold the end over and the light goes on so I know I'm good. I can then go ahead and add more lights with parallel circuits. It's, you can add um, several. I'm going to put probably about a half a dozen on here. And if you get confused about which way they go, you can always just um, test it out, put the battery in place, fold, and see if it lights up or not. Now I'm going to put glue on the back of my light strip. I'm going to sort of weave it through those holes and glue it in place so my light strip is inside of there and light it up. So that's about it.